hello. Um, so to start off, I'm Bethany Yoakum, just like you said. Um, I'm a content coordinator at WebSpec Design. So I write content, um, edit content, and uh, do URL redirects and strategize SEO for websites at our company. Just a little bit about WebSpec. So we're a full service agency. Um, we do development, digital marketing, design, um, web and print. We have a lot of clients that do ongoing SEO and digital marketing and advertising with us. Um, we also do custom website and application development, both for web and mobile. And then um, we do WordPress and Drupal, and we're also the master vendor for the state of Iowa. And we're in the process of rebranding, just a, sort of a sneak peek at the new WNR logo on the right. Um, a little bit about our Drupal team at work. So uh, our team's made up of several developers, a project coordinator, um, a program manager and senior project manager, and then designers and content coordinators are added onto projects as needed. So usually that's gonna be me um, when it's state projects. And we work with about 45 out of 52 of the state agencies in Iowa. Um, and our work with the state of Iowa also ranges from uh, maintaining Drupal 7 sites, um, carrying people over to Drupal 8, um, doing custom design, and then also ongoing support work. So a little bit of an introduction to SEO if you're not super familiar with it or if you would like to know a little bit more. Um, SEO is search engine optimization and optimizing a site for search engine friendliness involves hundreds of different factors that determine rank um, with Google and other search engines as well. And then Google's ranking factors for the most part have evolved over time to um, coincide with things that are also good for user experience. So for example, things that um, are good for users and for SEO include site speed, really descriptive and useful content, um, pages that interlink within your website and then out to other relevant sites, and then also a good heading structure. So you might be wondering if all sites need SEO. Um, SEO might not be the main focus of every single website project, but it depends on the audience and purpose a lot of the time. Um, but almost all websites can benefit from it since, like I said, what's good for search engines is also good for users in a lot of cases. Um, so at WebSpec, SEO is an aggressive focus for a lot of our clients that have uh, a high number of competitors in the area that they want to make sure they want to top out on search engines. but. In the case of state agencies, a lot of the time, it's more like um, about public knowledge. So SEO can kind of help uh, inform people about services that the state offers that people might not know are available since they can't find their website online. So what can we do in Drupal 8 to make sites a little bit more SEO friendly? Um, some of these will apply to Drupal 7 as well, but a couple of these modules are Drupal 8 specific. The first one I want to talk about is SEO titles and descriptions. So those are the link and the short summary that show in search engine results when your uh, site shows up for a query. So that top link is the meta title, um, underneath is the page URL, underneath is the meta description, and below that is the site links. Um, the site links are auto-pulled by Google, so you can't really determine which of those will show up, but you can set the meta title and the meta description. Um, and the reason you want to write these custom is so that people will know what to expect when they come to your website. Um, if you don't set a meta title or description, Google will pull um, their own automatically from your website, usually based on page title and then the first few sentences of a page. Um, so if you don't set your own, you'll usually see a couple sentences of content um, followed by an ellipsis that cuts it off in the middle. So best practices um, for setting meta titles and descriptions, in order to avoid those being cut off by Google and other search engines, you wanna try to keep the titles between 55 and 60 characters. Um, you wanna make sure your organization or business name is in there, um, the page name and topic, and then a certain <coughs> area or location if that's something that's relevant to your users. And then the descriptions underneath um, should be around 155 to 160 characters. Google has gone up and down on this over the years. Um, a couple years ago, there was a little while where they let people have as many as 320 characters showing. And you can actually put as many characters in as you'd like, um, but if it's above 160 characters, it's really likely to get cut off by Google. Um, so that's the best range to keep it within to make sure your description shows. And then you wanna write those in full sentences. 
Um, you want them to contain keywords that are relevant to the page content and then include a call to action if possible. So you can let people know just in a gentle way what they can get from that page, whether that's um, contacting your staff members, filling out a form, um, signing up for a program, um, things like that. And then I can actually show you um, how to set up uh, titles and descriptions in the back end of Drupal. Okay, so um, this site that I'm going to use in, as an example is a Drupal 8 site that we set up in the last year um, for Stop HIV Iowa, and I'm just going to use their back ends to kind of poke around and show you some modules. So um, for titles and descriptions, we're going to go here and we're going to search for meta tag. Yep, right here. Click on the arrow, and then you want to click configure. Um, go to the settings. And then here are all of your content types. Um, in a minute, we'll go through which content types you probably want to put meta titles and descriptions on and which you can probably leave off. Um, but for now, let's start with the front page. So we'll click. And then you can enable advanced tags if you'd like. Um, it won't hurt anything. Basic tags are the ones you'll, you're going to need most of the time. It's just that title and description. Um, but if you have advanced tags enabled, you can do more things that like integrate with social media um, if you have like a bigger overall strategy. So you want to check basic tags and then save your configuration and then go up to your content types. And then we're going to go to front page and drop this down to edit. Okay, and then you're going to click on manage fields for the front page content type. Um, this one already has meta tags enabled, but the first time it won't have it listed in there, so you're going to want to click on add field and um, click add a new field and then in the drop down there is one for meta tags and then you can just label that as meta tag or meta tag module and save and continue. And then once you use this for other content types, you can just click reuse an existing field and you can find it in there. Does that come with it? Yeah, the tag module is um, built in with Drupal 8. You just have to enable it. Oh, let's see. I can get my notes back. Okay. Um, so which content types will need SEO titles and descriptions? As a standard, almost always you're going to want them on your front page, news posts, and then basic pages. Um, they almost always are going to be pages that you want people to find in search results, and so you want those custom descriptions. But other content types that you um, may need to add SEO for, if you have custom content types, um, they may or may not need SEO. Some views may or may not need SEO. So here's sort of a short list that I made um, that can kind of you can use as a guide for whether or not you may need them. <coughs> if the view has a specific URL associated with it, as well as um, it's something valuable for your users, you want them to go to that page and find it on their own. Um, same goes for content types. And then, do you plan to have that view or the content type, um, their URLs indexed with search engines, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, but if you're going to have it in your sitemap and you want it to be searchable in um, search results, you probably want to have SEO titles and descriptions on those. Um, and like I put here at the bottom, um, the views don't let don't have a thing where you can um, just enter the title and description like I just showed you. Um, but through the code, you can custom enter that for any views that you think need it. Next, I want to touch a little bit on alt text. Um, so alt text's primary purpose is um, for users that use assistive technology or have disabilities um, and are able to see your images can still get the information that images offer on your website. So it's just a short description um, that allows them to get the same information as everybody else. And Drupal is actually pretty friendly um, about alt text. As you can see, we've got the um, image on the right where it has the star field, and it won't let you save the image in a WYSIWYG editor unless um, you've already set alt text on it. And that's just going to be you know, a short description, um, but it also plays a part in SEO. So alt text and SEO. Um, 
Alt text is important for SEO because if you want your images to be able to show in image search results, you're going to have to have an alt description on there that accurately um, describes the image on the website. Um, so I have an example here that's a picture of our founder, Jeremiah Tierhart. Um, for this image, alt text that says, black and white photo of WebSpec founder Jeremiah Tierhart is accurate in the context that it's presented. Um, black and white photo of a bald man with a checkered shirt is also accurate, but <laughs> within the actual website's context, it doesn't really tell you who he is. Um, so you want those to be specific and uh, concise most of the time. And then I will also note, um, not all images will require alt text for accessibility reasons. Um, if you have an image on your website that is only meant for decorative purposes and it's not offering any information or showing people new things that they wouldn't know from reading the content, um, you can leave an alt description off, but it will not index in search engines. So something to keep in mind. Okay, so SEO friendly headings is our next point. Um, so heading structure, heading classes can go um, all the way from an H1 to an H6. Um, H1 is going to be the page's overall topic and in a lot of cases it's going to be the main page title um, unless you want it to be something different. And for clarity with search engines and for users, um, you want to have only one H1 but you'll have multiple H2s, H3s all the way down to H6, depending on the content and what you need. Um, so if you're using multiple headings, you want to make sure to never skip a heading class. Um, for an example, if you have an H3 on the page, if you can't skip from an H1 to an H3, um, you'll want to have an H2 above that first. So here's an example on a site we worked on for a Department of Revenue. Um, that title on the top is their H1, the main page topic, and then the first heading below it is an H2. Um, like I said, H1 is considered the overall page topic. Um, you only want one of those because if you have multiple, in most cases, it can confuse search engines. Um, they're not sure what your overall page topic is about if the content falls under too many different topic areas. Um, so for accessibility, this also helps users who use assistive technology know what the page is about. Um, a common way that people use screen readers is to click through the headings of the site. Um, so they'll see the H1 is the page topic, and then much like a person skimming, they'll see the H2 below that, H3, and then they can use those headings to kind of um, guide them to which content they need. So the headings should be specific also for search engines, um, having some keywords and information uh, that's just directly relevant to your page, um, not too cutesy, but to the point helps with SEO because Google can build up a better picture of what your site's about and how the content interacts. Um, a note, stay away from using headings as um, a styling device and make sure they first and foremost will fit with the content of the page. Um, this is something we struggle with with people who are super new to Drupal. Um, they might think, oh, this heading looks really big, I'm just gonna make this one in H1 um, within the WYSIWYG content, but that's not good for search engines, so just always make sure that the heading class matches the content um, before you think about the style. And then, so headings in Drupal, uh, search engines prefer that headings be page specific as possible um, with unique content that accurately describes the page. But with Drupal's default setup, in a lot of cases, we found there are some page elements that are marked as hidden H2s. Um, a lot of those are the search field, the top menu, the footer menu. Um, we've had this problem with Drupal 7 and Drupal 8. Um, and so if possible, I would recommend changing those to a non-heading label, um, even as body copy would be better, even though it's um, hidden visually from the users. And, uh, but if you're not able to change those, I would just make sure that you build up as many unique H2s and H3s on the page as possible so that Google sees you do have unique content on the page other than those three that are the same for all the pages on the website. Um, and I can show you to the back end um, of a, a page with the WYSIWYG where you can choose the heading structure. So you can configure um, your HTML on here so that you can actually restrict editors from using an H1. Um, so by default, this up here is going to be your page's H1. Um, we're in basic HTML right now. And if I click on the heading tab, you see all we have available is um, paragraph text and then H2s through H6s. However, 
you can switch that to full HTML. And then that offers the availability to choose an H1. Um, so it just kind of depends on how much control you want to give to people. I would recommend most of the time having um, that kind of locked down in the basic mode, um, just because it's, it's easy to slip and you scroll to the wrong one in the list and then end up with more H1s than you intended. Okay, next note is gonna be about URL structure. Um, so why does URL structure matter for SEO? Um, users will see your URLs in search results, so it's good for them to be able to see actual words about what the page is. Um, but within the URL structure, Google will read each of the words in your URL if they are separated by dashes. Um, so if they're run on words, they're just going to read it as one word, but if they're words separated by dashes, they use that information to kind of help them tell what the page is about. Um, Drupal's default URL structure, um, it's somewhat you SEO friendly, but it doesn't accurately um, offer like the nesting. It, it will nest it, but you have to set it in a certain way. So I will show you um, in just a moment, but where you can set the URL, um, by default it will auto-generate auto the URL to be what your page name is. So say it was like policy resources, it would be slash policy dash resources, but if it's a page that you don't want in your navigation, but you know it's related to like the about page, you would have to put that about in there first. So it would be about slash um, policy dash resources. So I recommend um, setting those manually most of the time, but if you have a site that doesn't have very many pages or you want all the, page, um, all of the pages that are nested to be in the navigation, um, you can select for them to be in the navigation that will add it to the URL structure. Um, sitemaps. So your sitemap file is really what suggests to search engines um, should be indexed from your website um, and you can choose which URLs those are going to be. Um, there might be content types within Drupal that you just want to make sure um, those things don't show up in search results. So for example, um, a lot of the times we'll have an FAQs content type um, where they're not meant to be viewed as individual pages, but they pull into a page um, in accordions, but the URLs with the individual ones still exist, but they don't need to be in search results. Um, it's also a good way to avoid duplicate content with Google, so Google will see that you have a bunch of pages that have those FAQs on them, and then they also show up in a big list. Um, some of those pages are likely to not get indexed. Um, so I recommend the simple XML uh, sitemap module. This is not default installed with Drupal. Um, this is one you'd have to add yourself, but I think it's a little bit easier than the sitemap module Drupal offers. Um, and I think it's pretty easy to configure. And then content types that should be included in your sitemap are usually the same ones that you've created those SEO titles and descriptions for. So like front page, basic pages, news posts, and then um, other custom ones as needed. And I can show you um, the simple sitemap module here. Okay, so once you have that module installed, you can click on sitemap entities and then click enable content um, node support and that will allow you to add this to individual content types. So we'll go up to structure, content types, and let's look at the basic page. Click edit. Yep, and if you scroll down here on the left, you'll see um, simple XML sitemap is an option and you'll click here. Um, and this is where you can choose, I do want to index everything in this content type or I don't want to index everything in this content type. Um, you can also do custom links if you have maybe one page from this content type that you would like to put in the sitemap and that's back in the module. Um, but for the most part, we'll say index entities of basic page. And then here's the page priority. Um, this isn't something that is super important to search engines, but it kind of allows you to choose which content is more important on your website. Um, in a lot of cases, the homepage will be set at a one and everything else will be set at um, 0.5. And especially with Google, it's not something that's um, super crucial to their algorithm, but if you'd like to set it, you can. I'd recommend a 0.5 for most. And then here you can change um, how frequently they, they will crawl this content type to check for changes and um, add additional pages. Um, 
It kind of depends on how often you uh, update your website, but I would say a safe one to use is weekly, unless you are a regular blog poster, in which case you might even want it to be daily. Um, but if you're constantly updating the pages on your website, um, weekly would be a good way to get that content um, indexed with Google a little bit faster. And so then once you click uh, save content type, oh, you can also mark this box here that regenerates your sitemap after you click save. Um, and this will just update the sitemap file automatically to include all the pages in the content type and then click save. And then I can show you sitemap file. You'll just type in sitemap.xml. Yep, and there it is. So the next step after you have a sitemap, um, I highly recommend submitting your sitemap through Google Search Console in specific. But if you know you happen to have a lot of users that are on Yahoo or Bing, they also have sitemap submission tools you can use. Um, but Google Search Console offers a lot more than just sitemap submission. Um, so it's a free account. You can just sign up with a Gmail address. Um, you'll have to add a code to your site to verify that um, you own the property. Or if you have a Google Analytics account, um, you can verify that through Search Console and connect it if it's the same email. Um, and then this will let you submit your sitemap. It's super easy, like I have in the picture here. Um, they'll just have you do sitemap.xml, and then you click Submit. Um, and then underneath, they'll let you know if they received it properly. Um, and you can also look in Search Console, too, to see if you have any indexing issues. So they'll give you a list of URLs that are not indexing. And then with a the recent update, a lot of the time, they'll also give you a reason it's not. Um, so maybe there's a code error or a server problem or something, and then you can fix those as needed. Okay, and then 301 redirects. Um, so what needs to be redirected? If you are remaking a website um, with the same domain as an old one, you're most likely going to want to strategize 301 redirects during your switch over. Um, the presence or lack of redirects is not directly a ranking factor, but it uh, makes a big difference for user experience. So if you don't have anything marked as a redirect and you submit a new sitemap, it's going to take a long time for Google to filter out those old pages, and you're probably going to have a lot of click-throughs that lead people to 404 errors um, or pages where they can't find what they need. So if you're changing the URL structure um, to be more SEO-friendly for your new site, you want redirects, and then you can also use a redirect for any pages that will no longer um, exist in your new website. Um, it's okay to have some 404 errors, but a lot of the time, if there's a page that's being eliminated, there's a natural place to redirect them. So maybe it'll just go to the home page of the new site or the last page in that category um, that's associated with that content. And then if you need a lot of redirects, um, you can also upload those in a CSV file. Um, so in the left column, you would have just the slash part of the old URL, um, and then that listed. And then in the right column, you'll have the slash and then the new URL. And then you can upload that to your website so you don't have to manually enter like 300 redirects. But I'll show you um, what it would look like if you do those manually. So the redirect module um, is also already a part of Drupal 8. You will just have to enable it. Um, and then once you've got that, you'll go to the redirect module. You want to click Add Redirect. And then um, it's kind of interesting the way this is set up. So this top field already has a slash built in. The bottom one does not. Um, so this is where you're going to want to put the old URL that you would no longer like people to go to. We'll type in old URL. And then to the new one. Um, so if I try to do just the new URL without the slash, Um, it won't save it. It needs to have the slash in there. And then you will always want to select um, 301 move permanently. I can't really think of any situations where you would want to mark it as a 302 found or um, a temporary redirect if it's a page that's no longer going to exist. So you can just always mark um, moved permanently and then click save. Okay, and then one of the last things I want to talk about is canonicals. 
Um, when do you need a canonical URL? So a canonical URL is kind of what indicates to search engines um, where original content comes from if the content is used somewhere else on the web or on your same website. Um, so by default, Drupal will install a canonical URL on each basic page, and that URL will match the page that you're currently on, um, and that's okay, that kind of establishes that page is um, the key source of any of the content that's there. If it's used somewhere else, they'll point back and say, oh, yep, it's from there. Um, so if content within your site is duplicated from another website or even another page on your own website, and you don't have a canonical tag installed, um, Google's going to mark that for duplicate content and say, oh, this is plagiarized from somewhere else, or it's taken from this other page, um, it's not unique content, and they will probably take it out of search results or have it be, you know, lower in search results. Mm -hmm. How does Google handle syndicated content where Associated Press has an article that shows up in all the papers, mm -hmm. or even a collection of websites that maybe share some content? Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the time, if you offer the attribution in the article saying this is from Associated Press, here's the URL, they will also kind of treat that as an informal canonical and they'll realize you didn't just steal it as your own. Um, uh, so, so if there's a link back to the Yeah, so you either, yeah. either want to have a canonical URL installed or um, attribute the source, or you can do both. It never hurts to do both. Yeah, we had a situation like that um, earlier this year trying to figure out syndicated content from the CDC for a uh, Stop HIV Iowa and did something similar. Yep, so the canonical tags, um, if you do have content that's from another page on your site, whether it's probably I'd say two or more paragraphs, a pretty big chunk of content, um, you'll want to change that canonical tag. So on the newer page, um, where they have the canonical tag, you can see that down there at the bottom, you'll want to change that URL to be where the original content came from and then save it. Um, so that will kind of point people, basically, when they land on that page, Google will say, oh, yeah, that comes from over here. So it's not that they're like, black flagging the website mm -hmm. entirely. It's just saying, OK, this content is really the originals over here. So they're not going to list like 30 results in the search. Right, it's yep. just the original that's listed. Mm -hmm. yep. so there's a lot of Creative Commons copyrighted material that's everywhere. That, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, they're not likely to blacklist your whole site. It's probably just that page that shares the content just because, you know, even if you didn't plagiarize and it came from your, comes from your same site, like you said, they don't want to have 30 search results that have all the same content in them, so. And that is all I have. Do you have any questions, other things you want to hear about? strategies that you've sort of outlined here with SEO and the design of the site. I've heard some people say just you know, design a quality site with quality content and a lot of that's just going to organically rise to the top. Mm -hmm. But there are other things that people do with you know, having inbound links and mm -hmm. link share campaigns and different things that can sometimes backfire. I guess. Yeah, that'll that um, does factor in as well. A lot of times link sharing campaigns kind of um, edge into the land of black hat SEO, yeah. which can be effective for really short amounts of time, but it's sort of a way you're trying to trick search engines. So um, we would recommend writing quality content. Um, content length is another thing that factors in a lot. So even though it can get kind of tedious for users, pages that have more words actually rank better on Google most of the time. Um, and then links that go within your own website but out to other websites related as well also do really build up your reputation. Yeah. yeah. I had somebody once contact me and they said, can you do us a favor, take this link off of your site because we paid some black hat person, to, <laughs> you know, it's like a thousand round links. Uh -huh. So they were looking for anybody who volunteered to not tell anyone about the link. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's something that's worth checking into, um, especially if you're switching from Drupal 7 to Drupal 8, just check your current backlinks, and if you have any spammy ones, you can always reach out to those organizations. They'll likely take them off, because um, Google will usually prize um, your reputation based on the links that you carry or the links that come to you. So usually it's going to be peer organizations or maybe parent organizations, um, things that Google thinks is reputable. Mm -hmm. I'll mention, uh, a couple times you said that uh, meditating and XML site map redirects are included with Drupal. If you just install them with all Drupal, they're not included. Okay. Most likely your development team is probably just installing them before you take a look at it. Mm -hmm. um, but they're very easily do. 
able to install like it, most other modules and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. so. okay. Anything else? Yep. There's something that's called RDF, and it has something to do with meta tags. In Drupal? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It says it enriches your content with metadata. Anybody know about that? No, that RDF. Oh, uh, that's a semantic markup. Could, excuse me, grab the library, library science world. Uh, it could be like schema.org, semantic markup. Okay. We all differ semantically. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, for various, uh, for various things like books, uh, locations, business information, phone numbers, type of thing. You can put some extra data in your web page to say, this is a phone number, this is a, a location, this is an event, this is that, this type of thing. And, and here's some more information about it. So Google or other sites could actually just look at this mm -hmm. stuff and say, hey, I know what this is. Okay. Um, and there's a few ways to do it. Yes, Schema.org is probably uh, a, one of the more popular ways to organize it. RDFA is another one that's like just putting some HTML codes like in line with stuff. Schema.org usually puts it in a different spot, but there's a few ways to kind of organize that. Yeah, yeah. and we work with Schema too. Um, it's not always appropriate for every project, but like you said, if you've got um, a long list of phone numbers or upcoming events or things like that that you want to suggest to search engines, hey, this is important to people, they can pull that into their listings. Yeah, for example, Google has like a job listing thing right now that you can use, and some websites like want to make sure that schema.org actually can view all their job information so that Google kind of put that into their system. Um, so if you just search for jobs, you can kind of see some jobs in the thing. And if you have your schema.org set up or your AFA set up correctly, it could actually pull in your site to jobs. Other questions? Thank you.